Today, we're going to be finding out just how much it costs to run an Ironman 70.3. Next year in Geelong, I'm completing my very first Ironman 70.3 triathlon, and I wanna find out just how much registration, gear, travel, filming will all cost me. So where do we start? Well, let's take a look at how much the actual event costs to enter. So we'll look up the Ironman website and see what pops up. So we've found our Ironman 70.3 Geelong and we'll click register now. So our first cost is gonna be $560 where on race day, we receive everything that I need to complete the Ironman. So that's one done, $560 in the basket. We're gonna need something to run in. I'm thinking of picking up the Nike Tempos. I currently run in the Pegasus 38s, but I needed something with a bit more spring when it comes to the racing. As you can see, they are more of a sock feel. And I think that the way that they slip on will be easier for me to put on during transitions and will make that whole process faster. And I also like that secure feeling around the ankle and with that lockdown through the laces. So for me, these are probably the ones I'm gonna be going with. I haven't picked them up yet, but probably my number one option. So we can put that down as another 270 spent and we'll add that to the basket. We're also gonna be needing something to swim in because I can't just win my budgie smugglers the whole time. Now through my searching, I've found a couple of different options that look pretty decent. I've come across the Propel one from 2XU and as a beginner, I'm probably not likely to be wanting to spend $550 on a wetsuit that I'm gonna be wearing for 40 to 50 minutes. Something like the Athlex Float Men's Triathlon Wetsuit from Orca is probably the most popular one you're gonna see out in the field. But for $400 as a beginner, it's probably not in my price range just yet. The Orca Open Water Core TRN Men's Wetsuit. Another great option from a reputable brand. The Orca wetsuits are built for this open water swimming stuff, but it's still probably a little bit above what I want to be spending right now as a beginner. This is where the Hub Aminus Wetsuit comes into play. It's marked down from 313 to 205, and it's probably the best looking suit at this price that I have found. But if I can't find this in my size, I'll probably be going for something even cheaper with the DHB, but really I want to be trying on these wetsuits before I buy them online because they are fairly expensive and something that you want to fit well. If anyone has experience with these wetsuits, what ones I should buy, please listen down below in the comments and I'll be checking them. But for now I've been going with the Orca Open Water Core TRN just to place it in the middle of the price ranges and yeah hopefully we can average that out if I end up going with different options. So we add that to the basket for $280. Now you're probably wondering, where is the bike? Luckily enough for me, dad already has a bike that I'm allowed to use during this event. So I don't have to include the cost of a bike, but if I were to be, it'd probably be around that $2,000 mark. But what else do I really need for this run? Essential gear for Ironman 70.3. Okay, so we've found a website and it's telling us our triathlon gear list. So let's take a look at these essential ones that we don't have, the tri suit. Something that I'm looking at is whether I want sleeves or just the singlet version. Something like this from 2XU is probably something that I want to be picking up. As you can see, they've got pockets in the back for anything, you gels, drinks, anything you want to be putting in. So we're looking at the sleeveless version. Again, we've got our pockets in the back, zip at the front. I think this might fit better underneath my wetsuit. I'm not sure, I haven't tried them on yet, but something sleek like this, just the black design. Looks good, looks clean. So we're going to be putting this into our basket for $140 as our tri suit for the race. So we've now ticked off the tri suit. What's next? Well, I don't have any good goggles. The ones that I've been using are scratched up. They're ones from when I was a kid. What ones should I get? So already off the bat, we're looking at probably a $40 investment on these goggles. And I think this style, less of the string and more of that band at the back is probably something I want to be going for. And these ones looking pretty good just off the bat. At the moment, I'm going to be putting this into my basket for another $40 as an investment into my training and swimming I want to be getting early on. So the Volar Noosa Swim Goggles, black gold mirror lenses. Put that into our basket. Let's take a look at socks. Now for running socks, they have to have a good feel. So we need something breathable and lightweight. I've been looking at different options and right now we'll probably put down the Nike Spark lightweight running socks, see how they feel on foot. And there's another 25 into the basket. But what are some things that aren't essential items but will increase performance and help me get through this? A partner with Ironman is Roker. Now Roker have some great options of sunglasses, probably picking up a pair of these as they do look quite nice. Now just looking at the right now. I'm hoping this isn't in USD because if it's in Australian dollars, 160 doesn't seem like too much, but 160 US probably is stretching it just a bit. I'm looking at something a little bit less 
with this option, the Heatwaves uh, Fujitech sunglasses black. Now, I'm probably gonna opt in for that polarized version. It's in AU, so no issues there. Obviously, I wanna go in, see how they feel, if I can find a store that has them. But for now, probably around that $160 mark, and we'll chuck those into the basket, just because I think these Rokas are in American dollars, as it is made in Austin, Texas. So let's chuck those into our basket for another $130. And coming to the end, we're probably gonna be looking at some of the more niche things to be carrying around and using in our thing. But we've still got one big important thing that we haven't looked at. Now, currently I own a Garmin 4Runner 245 Music. It's a great watch. It's great for beginner runners, but it doesn't have a multi-sport option. I don't want to be wasting my time clicking on my watch, starting and stopping different activities. So they already have a multi-sport and triathlete section and prices for these can range from probably 2000 all the way down to $260. What I want to be looking at is the 4Runner 900 series. So they've come out with the 945 as its go-to watch for your advanced multi-sport triathlon runs or marathons. This is a great watch, but for only $100 more, you can get the upgraded 4Runner 955. For $100, it has a couple more features that I think will outlast the 4Runner 945, and it's just worth spending that extra $100 to increase performance and just reliability throughout your training. For now, I'm gonna be adding the 4Runner 955 to the total cost with $600 into the basket. What else do I need? Well, stuff like this might come later on as I pick up different needs that I think are necessary, but something like a clip-on bag to put around myself during the ride or during the run might be a useful investment. They're not very special in terms of their function, but they do offer that room to carry those gels and different foods and snacks to keep myself energized during the run. And I did see a couple of people like Theo Baker using them during their thing as something important for them to use and keep themselves energized throughout the whole experience. So we'll probably chuck in the $50 option here from Hyperfly Australia, just to round it out at that $45 mark into the basket to cover the cost there. Now, I think that is the gear list done. We've got through the bike, tri suit, all of the essential items, and we've gone through the non-essentials, stuff that probably isn't always necessary and I already have at home. Let me know down in the comments, am I missing anything else? Will I need anything else from your experience? Is there anything that's helped you? Is there anything that I put into the my basket that doesn't look right? So now that we've got everything out of the way, let's calculate the total. I'm gonna have it running total up on screen and let's see how much this all comes together to equal. So we started off with the Ironman registration fee. So $560 is the entry fee. That's our starting balance. Moving on, we've got our running shoes, $270. So we'll add another $270 to the total. Then we moved on to our wetsuit. We went with the mid-range Orca Open Water Core TRN. For now, we will be putting in $280 to round that off. Now moving on, we have our tri suit. I'm liking the look of the sleeveless, pretty affordable. $140 is our price. So we're going to be putting in $140 for our tri suit cost. Moving on, we got goggles, $40. That's pretty much what you're gonna be paying for any pair of goggles. These ones look good. It could be a different brand, could be a different pair, but $40 is what we're gonna be putting down for our budget. But yeah, we'll add another 40 there for our goggles. And we've got the running socks, something that could elevate performance. Probably gonna be coming around the $25, $30 mark for a pair. So we'll add 25 to the running total. And yeah, then we get on to our glasses. At the moment, I've got a pair looking pretty decent for 160. So we'll add 160 to our running total. For $600, suddenly I could be getting behind, but you let me know, is it worth it? Should I buy this? But I will be putting it down into my running cost right now. So we will add another 600 into that total. And then we get into our little niche thing, which is our bum bag as we use to cycle. And we'll put in another 45 for that. And there we go. We have put in all our total costs for the Ironman into a spreadsheet and it works out to be a measly $2,118.41. However, I am wanting to film this. I want to document this and I want to invest in the product that I put out to you guys. And something that just released today is actually the all new GoPro Hero 12 Black. It works out to be around $550 for a brand new camera. I think it's a pretty good investment. So let's add that. And our total goes up to 2.6, nearly 2.7 grand. So 2,673.41. That's a lot of money. But in Investing in this stuff early means I don't have to pay for it later and I will be using it on multiple occasions, hopefully. So yeah, guys, please leave in the comments below. Where have I gone wrong? What have I missed? What have I gotten right? Can I improve anywhere? Pretty much let me know whatever you have, guys. Whatever experiences you've had with these products or something that's helped you along the way, drop a comment and let me know and I'll keep you updated. But for now, 2.6, 2.7, nearly pushing that through grand. If you add in the bike, if you add in helmet, shoes, anything else that you might not already had, you're probably looking at a five 
grand sort of margin to enter into one of these competitions with some decent quality equipment. Now, obviously I'm starting from relative scratch, but it still adds up and you're gonna be paying that registration regardless. You're going to be putting in food, water, nutrition, travel to get to these events. So it does add up, but it's enjoyment, it's fun. I wanna push myself. This is an investment that I'm willing to make. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you legends in the next one.